No one really knows where the moon came from, and the more we study it, the stranger it gets. So in this episode, we'll uncover true scientifically recorded facts about moon, facts that not only challenge its very existence, but raise much bigger question. Was it placed there for a reason? That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. But decades later, and we still don't know where the moon actually came from. See, there are three major theories about how moons are formed, but none of them really explain how our moon came to be. For example, the first theory is the capture theory, and it says that moon formed elsewhere in the solar system and got pulled in by Earth's gravity. That sounds simple, but something as massive as our moon, traveling at 6,000 miles per hour, doesn't just slow down and fall into perfect orbit. It either escapes or causes a complete chaos. Then there's the second theory, the fission theory, and it suggests that moon was once part of Earth that just spun off due to rapid rotation. Now, as simple as this sounds, there is no physical evidence of how that could ever happen. The math just doesn't support it, because that kind of event wouldn't lead to calm, stable orbit the moon has today. It would have been chaotic, unstable, and likely pulled the moon right back into the Earth, or sent it drifting off into the space. Either way, it wouldn't have created the moon we see today. But then, there's the third theory, and it's currently the most accepted theory amongst scientists. It's called the Giant Impact Hypothesis. Now, it's the idea that billions of years ago, Mars-sized planet collided with Earth, and the debris caused by impact eventually formed the moon that we can see today in our sky. But even this theory has one major flaw. See, moon is way too similar to Earth. Its chemical makeup matches Earth's outer layer almost exactly. And if that much debris came from two different bodies, it should never be this identical. It's just too one-sided. So, after decades of research, billions in funding, and the best minds in science, we still don't have an answer. Like, not one that truly explains what the moon is, or why it behaves the way it does. It's almost like the moon doesn't fit the story we've been told. Like, it wasn't never part of it to begin with. But it's not just the moon's origin that doesn't make sense. See, all of the moon's craters, no matter how wide or small, are only a few miles deep, and this doesn't make any sense at all. Think about it. Normally, the bigger the asteroid that hits a planetary body, the deeper the craters it creates. It's natural, right? That's just physics. But not on our moon not even close. See, the moon holds one of the largest known impact craters in the entire solar system, the South Pole Aiken Basin. It's so massive that it could fit the entire Western Europe inside it. It's over 1,600 miles wide. And yet, it's only as deep as some of the moon's smallest craters. That just does not make any sense at all. It's almost like there's something beneath the surface protecting whatever's inside. And if that's the case, then it might also explain the next mystery. See, when the moon gets hit, it doesn't just shake, it rings like a bell. Now, this phenomenon was first discovered during the Apollo 12 mission in 1969, and as a part of the mission, NASA deliberately crashed a piece of the spacecraft into the moon to measure the vibrations of, from the impact. Now, they were trying to study the moon's internal structure. You can think about it like 
doing an ultrasound of the planet, if you like. But when it hit, the moon didn't just shake. It rang like a bell for over an hour. And this left scientists speechless. And since then, NASA has repeated this experiment multiple times, always with the same result. And just like with the craters, scientists still can't fully explain why this happens. I mean, they have theories, like for example, the moon is much drier and less geologically active than Earth. And this means the shock waves from impact don't get absorbed the way they do here on Earth. Instead, they revertebrate longer. Okay, that makes sense. But that doesn't explain why those vibrations are so clean and why they last so long. Dry rock might echo, but ringing for an hour? That's more than just dry terrain. That's a structure behaving like a resonating chamber. And at this point, would it be really crazy to ask what's hiding inside of our moon? Especially when you realize that our moon doesn't look or behave like a typical moon at all. Look, most moons in the known universe are less than 1% the size of their planet. They're very tiny, but our moon it's 27 times bigger than that. It's nearly a quarter the size of the Earth. And it's not just the size, actually, because most moons are oddly shaped chunk of rocks, if you like, captured by gravity. But ours is almost a perfect circle, and it's sitting at just the right distance, perfectly placed to tilt the Earth axis and stabilize the entire planet. Remove the moon and the Earth's tilt would wobble, seasons would shift, and the entire climate would collapse into chaos. Life as we know it could never exist. And that's not even everything. See, our moon is roughly 400 times smaller than the sun, but it also somehow happens to be 400 times closer to the Earth. And that means, from our perspective, the moon and sun appear almost exactly the same size in the sky, perfectly aligned to create total solar eclipse. Now, this phenomenon doesn't exist anywhere else in the known universe. How crazy is that? The odds of this alignment happening in the universe are so low that, as of now, there is no mathematical formula to express it with a specific number. Imagine, it's so unlikely that scientists don't even try to calculate it. They simply call it a cosmic coincidence. I don't know, but to me, it's almost as if it wasn't just an accident at all, as if someone or something placed this huge structure in our sky, creating the perfect conditions for the life on Earth to emerge and thrive. Hi, and thanks for watching this video. My name's Jacob, and on this channel, we dive into topics that suggest reality might be more than what we see with our own eyes. And if this video got you thinking, then you'll definitely want to check out this one next. I'll see you there.